time won't permit me. <clears throat> and the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, everyone say called. The angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said. And then if you would jump down with me to verse number 15. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time and said. Called a second time. I am of the persuasion this morning that this was an audible, an audible voice. Because as we get into this, this story is of Abraham sacrificing his son. And the knife is on the way down. And the first calling was, lay not thine hand upon the lad. It was, it was in my mind, I have always believed that to be vocal, audible. I don't, I don't sense in reading this that God was just talking to Abraham's spirit. I believe it was uh, an urgency, a calling. Lay not thine hand on, the son, on your son. And so, this morning with the help of the Lord, I have entitled this, and, and Brother Liam and I do believe the Lord spoke to my heart about this. And um, I want to title this today, Eavesdropping, on divine conversations, eavesdropping on divine conversations. Amen. Lord, I honor you today, and I am praying that you would anoint my heart and anoint my mind to bless this church. And as we launch Family Month and on this Heritage Sunday, Lord, help me to bless these people. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You can be seated. <clears throat> when, I was, uh, when I was growing up, on occasion... Mom and dad would invite company over to our house. And this, this company could be uh, ministerial colleagues. It could be friends, family, uh, missionaries. They would be in our home. We would have supper and, and things would get exciting and the stories would start to flow and then mom and dad would give the command I wasn't raised in a democracy <laughs> dad seemed to think he was an authoritarian and uh, our opinions didn't matter what we thought and, uh, and the decree would go forth to me and my brothers, it's now time for you to go to bed. And so we, we uh, because we feared for our lives, <laughs> we, uh, we, went, we, went, we went upstairs and we, uh, well, we pretended to go to bed. We'd stomp down the hallway and, and uh, stomp into the bedroom to make them think that we had indeed gone to bed. And then we would tiptoe 
back down the hallway and lay on the floor at the top of the stairs so that we... Now, some of you are not like you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> and we would lay at the top of the stairs. Shut up. Shut up. Quiet. Trevor, would you... Would you they're going to hear us. Can't hear. Quiet. Listen. And we would lay at the top of the stairs and we would listen to those conversations going on downstairs. Uh, Dan Goodine. How many of you know Dan Goodine? You know Dan Goodine. Dan, we used to go, and my wife and I, and visit Dan and Wanda. And Dan and I would go off in the other room and we'd be doing something on the computer there. He'd be showing me something and he'd say, brother, listen, they're into the low tones out there. How many of you know what the low tones are? Man, when, you're, when they get into the low tones, you know stuff is getting settled. My wife and Wanda, they'd be, it'd just, it would just be this low, and, and, and we, would, we would stop the computer, and we would just try to listen, because I don't know, maybe, we were afraid that it was about us or something. So we, the low tones. I, uh, uh, my wife has a sister named Nancy. And uh, when Nancy was a little girl, when her father would have board meetings or something in his office, Nancy would go up the stairs at the church into the prayer room. And she would lay on the prayer room floor and stick her ear to the wall of her dad's office and she would, Nancy loves information. <laughs> you be careful what you say around her because she loves information. And she, oh man, her dad will walk into the house and say, uh, Shirley, you should have heard what I heard today. Well, when Nancy hears that, she is all over that. What did you hear? What did you hear? What is it, Dad? What? And it's, it's torture. She, it, she, she would just badger. What is it? What is it? What is it? What is it? Until he eventually breaks down. <laughs> it's awful. It's painful to watch this. But she is stubborn. She'll get that out of him. And she'd lay on that floor and she would listen to those stories. And who, my goodness, I have a daughter who loves information. <laughs> I'll walk in the house from a meeting or coming from a district thing, and she'll say, Dad, you just know so much stuff. And one day, the three of us were driving in, a, in our car, and Sister Farrell and I were into some low tones, and Chrissy had her headphones in. And, uh, and the Spirit of the Lord revealed to me <laughs> that she, she was faking listening to music. The Lord revealed it to me. I don't know. I couldn't see her, her deal. But I just sensed in the Holy Ghost right off that she's not listening to music. She's listening to us. And so I said in the midst of our conversation, I said, and, and, and uh, Roma, tell Chrissy that I said hello. And Chrissy ripped the earphones out and started laughing. How did you know? She said, I was, I was, I was listening. In the early years of the telephone, uh, it's Heritage Sunday, so I'm trying to draw some reflection here. 
Uh, years ago, they had what was called a party line. How many of you remember a party line? This was several people on one telephone line. They could listen to each other's phone calls. Operators, operators could listen. They, they, had to, they had to punch this and operators could sit and listen and, and they could do what was called eavesdropping on your conversation. When I started pastoring, I had parents who would record their children's conversations on the telephone. And then they would bring those cassette tapes to me and they would ask me to listen to these conversations. My God, I don't need to know these conversations. In our Bible text tonight, it introduces us to an amazing story. It's an amazing story. Genesis chapter 22 it starts out and says that God tested Abraham. Everyone say, God tested Abraham. And this was Abraham's test. Say it again. God tested Abraham. And this was a test of Abraham. It was, it was between God and Abraham. This was, this was the scenario. God said, take your son Isaac, whom you love. Notice the Bible here. It says, your only son. Everyone say, only son. Take your only son, Isaac, no other sons. It, it's the only son whom you love. Go to Moriah and offer a burnt offering on the mountain I shall tell you of. And so Abraham rose and took Isaac, his son, split some wood, burnt offering. They went to the place God had told him. Abraham took the wood and he laid it on Isaac, his son, and he took the fire in his hand, a knife, and the two of them went together. In this entire exchange, Isaac only asked, or it's only recorded, that he asked one question. He said, we have fire and we have wood, but where is the offering? That was the only thing recorded in the Bible that Isaac asked. Abraham said, God will provide the sacrifice. So they went on. Abraham built an altar and placed the wood on it and bound Isaac, his son. I'm all about the language. I'm all about language and words. Every word means something. And, and sometimes when we read the Bible, we kind of miss things because we don't put ourselves in the scenario. Think about this from Isaac's perspective. He's walking along. They get to a place. His dad built the altar. And then his dad reaches down and starts to tie up his boy. And then he lays his boy on the altar. Now, if I'm Isaac, I'm going to start sweating a little bit. This isn't normal. It's like, uh, it's like uh, uh, my, my dog doesn't like flies. He flips out over flies. And so he was in the bedroom flipping out. And just now the great fly samurai comes into the bedroom with the fly swatter waving and swinging and slicing and dicing. And she looks at me and says, don't move. <laughs> and she's got that fly swatter. And she's, she's ready to come down on me. And I'm like, what, what are you doing? <laughs> Before it was done, my arm it still has marks in it from the fly swatter. It was there. Isaac is laying on the altar and, and, and Abraham is, is coming down. Isaac has got to be wait a time out. Time out. And in the midst of that, in the midst of that, God calls out and says, Abraham, 
do thy son no harm. And then we talk, and there's a ram in the thicket. And, uh, and then we stop the story there. We stop the story. It's, nobody, nobody goes on into the next couple of verses. And, and I want you to follow into the next couple of verses. <clears throat> because that's where things get really amazing for me. And that's what's going to set the tone for what I feel like I've come to share with you. Isaac gets untied and up off the altar. And the Bible says, and the Bible says that uh, the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time. A second time. And so Isaac is this silent character in this story. It's just kind of like watching a tennis match. Bing, bing, bing. Isaac has carried the wood, been put on the altar, off the altar. God's called out of heaven. The ram is in the thicket. And Isaac still, now he's standing there trying to, to calm down and get his nerves back about him. And he, he hears the angel call a second time. A second time. And he says... I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have not withheld your son, that in blessing I will bless you. Now, he's talking to Abraham. In blessing I will bless you. Multiplying I will multiply. As the stars of the heaven and as the sand of the sea and your descendants shall possess the gate of their enemies. And in your seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Now, I want to make two points. And then I'm going to get in the car. And we have a funeral this afternoon. And, uh, and, and I'm, so I'm going to un unburden my heart. Would you lift your hands with me right now? Lord, open my heart. Open my heart, Lord. Open my heart. Let your spirit now just settle on us, Jesus. Open our heart, God. Open our minds. I pray in Jesus' name. <clears throat> Number one, we need moms and dads and aunts and uncles, grandmas and grandpas in this sanctuary this morning that are sold out to the will of God. I am uh, encouraging your heart today that something needs to rise up in your heart and in your mind and in your spirit that I will die in this walk with God. I am not here trying this out. I am not here on a probationary period. I didn't start serving the Lord to see how it goes, and then I'll decide later on if I'm really going to see it through. I am praying today, and I am speaking over this audience of people, that there is a resolve that rises up in our heart this morning that says, I started on this thing with God, and I am going all the way through, and I am not stopping until these feet touch streets of gold. <clears throat> Amen. <clears throat> I'm not here checking it out. I'm not here looking it all over. I am sold out to Jesus Christ. My mind is made up. And it doesn't matter what comes my way. It doesn't matter what happens in my life. I am going to serve God. And it doesn't matter what test. It doesn't matter what trial. It doesn't matter what comes. I am anchored in Jesus. And I'm staying. I'm staying. I'm staying. I'm settled in my resolve to serve the Lord. Would you clap your hands unto the Lord? <laughs> Praise God. It started when Abram was called out of the land of the Ur of the Chaldees. Something happened in his spirit that when he received the call, he didn't look back. 
He left his father. He left his land. He left his gods. He left his religion. He made up his mind. I don't really know this God and I don't know where I'm going, but there's something about the call. I have a made up mind. I'm going where he tells me to go. I'm going to walk where he tells me to walk. I'm going to walk how he tells me to walk. I'm going to talk how he tells me to talk. I'm leaving these old things behind. I'm not keeping one foot in the world and one over here trying it out. I got both feet in the pool. I'm going to serve God until the very end. (laughs) Praise God. He left it all. And so when it came to his son, now I want you to notice the two generations that Abraham Abraham was willing to let go. I've left my my father. Now the Lord said, I want you to take your only son. So Abram's walked away from his family and his land. And now he's looking at his boy. And God said, now I want you to give me that. I'm telling you, Abraham was hardcore. His parents witnessed it. His son was about to witness it. I'm going to say it again to you. Abraham was sold out. Abraham was sold out. Abraham was sold out. His mom and dad knew it. His family knew it. His boy was about to find out. I've got a mom and a dad that is anchored in their walk with God. We need some moms and dads and grandmas and grandpas that your kids know. No, mom and dad are hardcore. They're in this for the long haul. Someone say praise the Lord. Come on, say it like you mean it. Praise the Lord. Say it, I'm sold out. Ooh, something's rising up in my spirit here. I feel like picking this pulpit up and running around this church with it. I've I just, I just feel invincible here this morning. <laughs> you. Everybody knew it. They didn't have to question where Abraham stood on the issue of following God and doing God's will. Isaac's heart was racing. His eyes were bugged out of his head. He was living in real time. And with a front row seat to his father's commitment to God. Real time. Time out, dad. Boy, hush. I am sold out to God. The Lord told me to do it, and we're going to do it, and we're going to see it through. Friday, I sat in St. Anne de Madawaska in a funeral service for Sister Louise Terrio. And... Uh, recently passed with cancer. One of our licensed ministers sat in that sanctuary. Listen to the funeral. At the end of the funeral, her husband stood up and uh, stood in front of his his friends, uh, her family, his family, his children, and that church. And he bid farewell to his wife. And in the process of bidding farewell to his beloved wife, He said, I'm here to tell you, we have a hope in Jesus Christ. We have this great gospel. And I'm saying goodbye, but it's going to be see you in a little while. I have a hope. And I thought, there he is, standing in front of his kids, letting them know I'm unwavering. I'm not moving. God hasn't failed me. He's still God of my life. And if this is what he's asked me to carry, I'm going to carry it because I'm going through with Jesus. Jesus, I'm going all the way. Oh, somebody, come on. Shout hallelujah with me. It's family month. It's family month. Let's start it off with some resolve. Parents, grandparents, adults, aunts, uncles, get something in your spirit. And I'm not saying you don't have it, but if you do, let's get something anchored in in our spirit. I'm in love with my wife. I'm in love with my kids. I'm in love with the church. I'm in love with God's plan. I'm in love with the pastor. I'm in love with the will of God. I'm in love with going to heaven. I'm not ashamed to be a child of God. I am excited about living for Jesus in 2008. In 22. 
I love the message. I love the standards. I love the lifestyle. I love the walk. I love the talk. I'm not here this and, and that over here. No, sir. What I am here is what I am there and what I am there and what I am in my family. I want to serve the Lord. Pastor, you haven't faced the kind of test I've had to face. I know I haven't. I know I haven't. You're correct, I haven't. And yet I know that based on the authority of the word of the Lord, that I must walk the road that lays ahead of me. And that God in his grace will see me through. When I was 13 years of age, dad passed a little home missions church. And uh, <clears throat> we were there. <clears throat> Dad decided one message that he was going to challenge the congregation to make heaven their home. I was 13 years old. And <clears throat> when Dad got done, Dad was five foot seven. <clears throat> and when he got done preaching, I walked up on the platform. <clears throat> as a 13-year-old boy, and I looked at my dad, and I shook his hand with as much of a man shake as I could give, and I looked him in the eye, and I said, I promise you that I will make heaven my hope. And there have been some up days and down days, not certainly <coughs> like what some of your up days and down days have been. But I plan today, by the grace of God, to fulfill that promise. My kids and my wife have seen me at my best, and they have seen me at my worst. And while I have no idea what tomorrow holds, it is part of my life's plan to make heaven my home. I'm not here hoping to make it by the hair of my chinny chin chin. I'm not here hoping to grab a hold of the heel of someone going in the rapture. I am planning with everything that's within me. I have a resolve when that trumpet sounds or when that resurrection happens. I'm going home with Jesus in the twinkling of an eye. I have made a resolve. I'm going to serve the Lord. And I didn't come here today to gatherize you. I didn't come here to sing you to death and sing and sing and sing. Oh, for God's sakes, we're sung to death. But I have come. I have come to give such as I have to you. In the name of Jesus, I want to put a resolve in your spirit. What a resolve. Silver and gold have I none. Never a truer word been spoken. She's got it all. <laughs> Silver and gold have I none, Brother Lehman. But such as I have. And this morning... I have got a made up mind to make heaven my home and to serve the Lord. And you and I have been doing this for over 30 years. I want you and I to go together. When that rapture comes, come on. I don't want, I don't want another one gone or, or Pharaoh gone. I want there to be, I want us to be, if the Lord tarries, 80 years old, slobbering and stubborn around up here and getting up and forgetting our sentences and words and, 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 and looking at each other. But oh, Brother Lehman, on these days, we're going to heaven. We made up our mind. We're going to serve the Lord. 
such as I have, such as I have, such as I have, such as I have. God sent me a word. Establish it now. Come on, somebody. Settle it now. I want you to be a friend of God. I want you to have the favor of God. I want the multiplication of God. I want you to have the ability to change the mind of God like Abraham. But it starts with a resolve. I'm going to leave my family. I'm going to leave everything. I'm going to lay it all behind. I'm going to put my son on the altar because I am going to pass the test and serve the Lord. Oh, let's clap our hands to the Lord this morning. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. Sister Farrell, I'm going to make heaven my home. You and I are going to go sweeping through those pearly gates together. And we're going to take our daughter and we're going to take our son and his wife and our grandchildren. We're going to, because we're not just trying this out. We have a made up mind. My mind is sold out to make heaven my home. <laughs> Praise God. And my dad held true to his word. Took a stroke at 50. Paralyzed in a wheelchair. One good arm. Amputated his good leg. Left him with his bad leg. Made his way to church in a wheelchair. Sat there when he, they sang songs he didn't know louder than what he liked and he'd bounce in that wheelchair and we'd go home I probably told you the story I, I don't have many stories so I have to say the same ones over and over again bounce in his chair we got home dad what were they singing I don't know did you like it no <laughs> what were the words couldn't tell you well, you were sure worshiping the Lord in his wheelchair, waving one good arm. He said, listen to me, boy. Again, I, I told you, he didn't much care about my feelings. <laughs> he said, let me tell you something. They called me Todd at home. I'm known Todd. Let me tell you something, Todd. I don't go to church because of the songs they sing. I don't go to church because of the music they play. I don't go to church because of who's preaching. I go to church because when I was a filthy sinner, God filled me with the Holy Ghost and I made up my mind, I'm gonna go to heaven. 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 I've made up my mind. Praise God. Praise God. How many going to heaven here this morning? Amen. 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 And he went with, he went with half a body. But when he died and went into those heavenly realms, hallelujah, he got a brand new body. That's why the songwriter said, I'm going through with Jesus. I'm going all the way. I care not where he leads me, the price I have to pay. I promise I would follow and he would be my guide. I'm going through with Jesus, whatever may. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Whatever may be tied. I need someone with a made up mind right now. Would you stand to your feet and let's just take a minute before God Almighty at the beginning of family month. Would you lift your hands right now? Let's just take a minute. Let's just take a minute and let's make up our mind right now. Right now. Right now, I'm making up my mind right now. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. 
Praise God. Praise God. Turn to your neighbor and tell him I got a made up mind. I got a made up mind. Okay. Can I have can I have just 10 more minutes? Thank you. Thank you. You can be seated. Point number two. Point number two. Am I keeping them too long? Am I, am I keeping them too long? What are you going to say, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I had a preacher one time, he preached, I knew our people get out at 1130. They get out at 1130 sharp. They get out at 1130. Brother Lewis put that in him. <clears throat> he found scripture for it or something and built a doctrine around it. <clears throat> he did the same with the Sunday night service. You, you get to have a, a Sunday night holiday. No, sir, not in Perth, Andover, or my, <clears throat> if we're the only church, if we're the only church in town, we've got to have a Sunday night service. It's got to be a Sunday night service. Then he retired and said to me one day, he said, you know, it's kind of nice having them Sunday nights off. I said, oh, really? The previous administration didn't seem to feel that way. It's amazing what happens when you retire. I pose point number two as a question. Where did Isaac get his sense of purpose in God? Where did Isaac get his awareness of God? <clears throat> you see, Abraham didn't know God. He had to follow God. Who, who do I say? I am, I am, I am. He's the, Abraham didn't know. Jacob, <clears throat> Jacob, it was Abraham's God and Isaac God. Jacob, Jacob didn't understand a relationship with God. But I don't get that about Isaac. Isaac, Isaac seemed to be at rest and, and in God. Why? I propose that somewhere on a mountaintop in the middle of his father's greatest test, Isaac eavesdropped on a conversation that his dad was having with God. And Isaac found out, I have a purpose. I have a destiny. I heard it from God and my dad. There's something special about me. Praise God. Abraham, I'm going to tell you something. I am going to bless the entire earth through your seed. And we established at the beginning that Isaac was his only son. And after Isaac got his wits about him, after almost being slaughtered, he uh, stands there and hears God tell his dad, I'm going to bless the entire earth through your seed. And Isaac's looking around and looking around and all of a sudden it hits him. That's me. That's me. That's me. I'm, I know what I'm supposed to be. I know what God's going to do in me. I know what's going to happen in my life. How did I find out? I heard a conversation between God and my dad. And I got some understanding about what I am. I learned up on the mountain that God is a provider. He was alive to tell the story because of God's provision. It was forever burned in his brain because if God hadn't provided, it was lights out for me. I know firsthand that God is a provider. How did I learn that? Because God and my dad had a, had a, a battle and I learned on that mountain that God provides. And I'm alive today because of God's Provision. Oh, 
When God told Abraham that all the earth would be blessed, Isaac realized, that's me. You know, we don't really hear much about Isaac. It's not like Abraham's journey, and it's not like Jacob's journey. Uh, Isaac, you know, he, uh, he, he got a real nice wife, and uh, they had a couple of kids, and uh, he, he, he tried to pull that little stunt there, you know, about my wife's my sister, and, and uh, I'm my own grandpa and all that stuff, and that didn't work out. And, uh, and the Bible says that God said, Isaac, I'm, I'm forever with you. I'm your Lord. And Isaac's great. And, and then he went and re some wells. And, and, and then even in Hebrews chapter 11, the only statement that, that's made in the Hall of Fame of Faith is that by faith Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau. There wasn't a whole, where, where did Isaac get that? Where did he get that? He got that on the mountain, eavesdropping in on a conversation between his dad and God. Amen. Now see there, my message is done. Whew, that's my two points. Now I'm starting to feel relieved, Brother Layman. I got through those songs that I didn't know and didn't mess them up too bad. And uh, I've preached my message and it's only 11.30. And uh, so we're gonna soon, we're going to soon go home. Everyone just take a deep breath. Whew. There. Did I tell you I'm too old for this? My message is very simple. Sister Lehman and the music, those great singers, you can come back. I have no idea what you're going to play. I don't know of any eavesdropping hymns. <laughs> we can always sing... The standard is move me with your message. At the end, here is my message today. Just like your kids know your political persuasion, just like your kids know your favorite car brand, Just like your kids know your favorite coffee, your favorite sports team, whether you drive a Polaris or an Articat, who you love, who you don't love, just like your kids know your favorite food, know your favorite place, know your likes, your dislikes, Make sure your kids know your God. Amen. Make sure they're close enough to hear God call you. Make sure they're close enough that they hear Him establish eternal promises with you make sure you take them to the mountain to worship make sure you build altars in front of them make sure they see you committed to the will of God make sure you put them in positions to hear the ram in the thicket make sure they're close enough to eavesdrop on some divine conversations whether it's true or not I have heard people say they see brother Lewis in me they say I mimic him and they say, they say we see some of his mannerisms in you. If this is indeed the case, it's no mystery how that has happened. I have been carrying his wood for 35 years. I have journeyed many mountains with him. 
I have tramped in and out of fishing holes. I don't fish. I've never been to the woods in my life until I came here. He tramped me. He tramped me in and out of fishing holes. He tramped me through deep snow to go back to boil the kettle. I have tramped with him to funeral after funeral, business meeting after business meeting, hospital after hospital after hospital, home after home, Bible school after Bible school. I have biked twi twice across this province just to be close enough to hear him and God. I have listened to him pray. I have listened to his stories. I have stepped in his footsteps. I have watched him steady the ship. I have experienced with him time and time again the ram in the thicket. I have seen God provide. Why? Because God called him out of the land of his fathers. And he and God were conversational. And I wanted to listen in on what that sounded like. started taking notes 30 years ago on the back of an envelope I have it paper clipped in my Bible things I've learned from Brother Lewis I've always kept one ear tuned to it because I didn't want to miss I didn't want to miss eavesdropping when Brother Lewis was having a conversation with God. Elisha purposed in his heart, I'm going to follow you, Elijah. No, stay here. I, I've got to go down here. Whithersoever thou goest, I'm going to go. Elisha, I need you to stay here. I'm, I'm going to Bethel. No, I'm coming. Elisha, stay here. I'm going to Jericho. No, I'm coming. Elisha, stay here. I'm going to Jordan. I am not leaving you. I'm not leaving you. What do you want? I just want, I just want a double portion of your anointing. Well, if you see me go, I'll give it to you. God will give it to you. And Elisha got a resolve in his heart. You're not getting out of my sight. Sure enough, the chariot, the fire, Elijah was gone, and the mantle fell. And I'm telling you this morning that the impartation didn't come with the mantle. It came daily listening to Elijah's conversations. It came daily watching Elijah work miracles. It came daily Elijah said, Elisha said, I'm going to make sure I hear and see everything Thing that you do. The mantle was just the, the cloak. It was just the, it was just the instrument. The impartation came from eavesdropping on divine conversations. We become what we watch, what we hear, and what we touch. Would you stand?
Moms and dads. Moms and dads, aunts and uncles, grandmas and grandpas. Be men and women of God. Because somebody, somebody is eavesdropping. They're following in your steps. They're listening. They're watching. They're doing. They're doing. Why are you doing it? I don't know. Dad always did it. Why do you drive a Chev? I don't know. Dad always drove a Chev. Years ago, Holiday Inn messed up Dad's reservation. Dad said, I'll never stay in another Holiday Inn as long as I live. I can't stand Holiday Inn. If you're going to put me in a Holiday Inn, I'm going to check out and go get a motel and I'll pay for it myself. You didn't book me at a holiday end, did you, brother? Such as I have, give I thee. Twofold purpose this morning. I need some moms and dads to have some divine conversations. And I need some young people that are willing to sneak out of bed Stick their ear to the office wall. Put in some headphones and turn off the music so that you can hear what God is saying. What God is saying. Get a sense of purpose for your life. Amen. Okay, so uh, family month, do you want me to turn it over to you? Do you, want, do, you, do you want to do something right now? or uh, Okay. See, we coordinated this quite well before the service started. We've got it all laid out. I, I don't want this altar to be... Uh, there's, a, there's a real touch of God here. I need some older folks that are wavering to come to this altar and say, I'm settling this today I'm going to serve the Lord I don't care what I've got to leave or what I've got to lay on the altar I'm going to serve the Lord and I need some young people that are willing to say I'm not leaving this mountain I'll carry your wood every day if I can get a chance to hear my eternal purpose through a divine conversation. Amen. Okay. So uh, would, you, would you come right now? Would you come right now? Would you, would you find a place around this altar with me? Would you come? Singers, help us out. God bless you. Yeah.